What were your writing flaws when you were accepted to the CSUN program? What did you want to work on? Or, or was it more to just experience something else? Oh, they're very specific things. Um, the one thing when I finished Rising Star, when I look back at the script, the structure of that film could have been so much stronger, but I didn't know how to get it there. And I knew it when I watched the film, you could see it that something was missing and it wasn't, wasn't in the way that it was directed or not the way that it was edited or music or anything like that. Technically it was fine because I had great people working with me, but the story really wasn't enough to keep people's interest for 90 minutes. So part of me going into CSUN was a real desire to study structure uh, and to study Dramatic, you know, dramatics, the basics of dramatics. That was something that I never really had. When, uh, when I went to Florida State, they were writing classes, but it really was more short film based and kind of uh, formula based, I guess is the best way to put it. You know, like somebody has uh, a goal, they have an obstacle, and they try to fix it all in five minutes. So I understood that. But how do you transpose that into a 90 minute film? where you have to keep somebody's interest and there has to be a growth of a character and things like that. I didn't really understand that. So, and this is having taught a screenwriting class before. When I got to this point, I, I still realized, okay, I, I was able to teach this to some undergrads to the point where they could understand it in a short film format, but I didn't get it from the feature length format at that point. So when I got there, part of the reason why I applied there was uh, Professor Edson, Eric Edson, he has a book on structure. So that's specifically like, that's his bailiwick. That's what he makes his money on. So I really wanted to work with him so that I could really get like a crash course on that. And it really helped. It really, really helped. Uh, and the best part was that wasn't the only paradigm that I was able to be exposed to in the program. Uh, a number of the professors that I had uh, went to USC for screenwriting and they have a different way that they teach screenwriting. It's the eight sequence method. I had never heard of that before. So after learning with Eric for a little while, then I started working with these other professors who were talking about the eight sequence method. And that made even more sense to me because Professor Edson is really, uh, his structure analysis is really granular. It's down to the moment. Eight sequence is a little looser. It's not, as to, it's not as exacting where things have to happen by a certain point. So the combination of learning both of those styles really helped me sort of figure out, okay, the stories that I want to tell can fit into both of these paradigms, just not completely one or the other. So now I'm at a point where when I, when I have an idea for a story, I can sort of see where it fits. Is it more according to how Eric teaches it, or is it more according to eight sequence? So it really is nice now where I can understand, you know, there's a certain kind of story fits a certain kind of structure. And I didn't get that before. So that going through school really helped me, you know, sort of learn to identify that. That's interesting. What type of story fits one versus the other? Or were there movies that plugged into both? There, oh, there's definitely movies that plugged into both. In fact, the, the eight sequence method is you can graft eight sequence onto Professor Edson's uh, structured paradigm. The difference is eight sequence can allow you to sort of go off and follow other characters in certain moments, but then you come back to the main story after a certain amount of time. And that made more sense to me because the stories I wanna tell are a little bit more character based. They're a little bit uh, looser. They're not really the, the tightly structured narrative blockbuster kind of stories. That's not the kind of thing that I want to do. And those are primarily the films that Professor Edson analyzes when he talks about his method. So to see eight sequence and to see that you can sort of take little uh, sidetracks every now and then and go on tangents before coming back to the main story, that made more sense to me. So, but since I know both of them, you know, I can, I can kind of see, okay, this independent film goes on, you know, goes on different tangents and goes in different places, but it's still effective because it follows a lot of the things that are also common in Professor Edson's structure, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of, like, would, would maybe Crash and Goodfellas, something that has sort of more of an ensemble cast, 
fit mm. into that eight sequence? Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. Ensemble pieces are certainly uh, eight sequence good ones. Um, you know, road trips can sometimes fit well, and they fit well into both, but I think they work well um, in eight sequence. Uh, a horror film, I don't know if you ever saw Misery, um, that's a great example of an eight sequence film because when the sheriff goes looking for the writer, for about 10, 15 minutes, you're following that character. You're not following the lead of the movie. Ah. And then at the end of that sequence, we come back to the main story. So that's an example of that. Interesting. Yeah. Then what, what films would fit more into Edson's, Professor Edson's style? You think of, you think of any popular film you know, uh, that's come out, uh, Legally Blonde would yeah. be a great example of a very traditionally structured film that falls into uh, his style. Uh, Collateral is another one that does, where you have a character, they have a, um, they have a number of actions that they have to complete over the course of the film, and by completing those actions, they open up more problems for themselves. And that's what sort of drives the story, is them overcoming those problems as the story continues. It's kind of, it's a little hard to talk about in the abstract, but it's, Professor Edson says that every, every major story hero has 23 major goals that they need to accomplish over the course of the film. And then there are certain moments that sort of shift what it is that they're trying to get. And then over the course of the film, they learn something in the quest of trying to accomplish all of these goals. Again, it's very simplistic, but that that is a little bit more exacting and a little bit more, I guess, I don't know what the right word is, specific um, than eight sequence, which is which gives a little bit more room for playing around, I think. I know he uses uh, Aaron Brockovich, as mm -hmm. a, which is a fantastic film. And yes. I went, a, after interviewing him, I went back and, and watched it. And I'm like, this really is an amazing, like Susanna Grant did such an amazing job. Oh, with she's it. brilliant. And, and even though uh, Julia Roberts, even though Julia Roberts, even though the Aaron Brockovich character, Julia Roberts, interacts with these different people that have been affected by the situation, it is really mainly about her journey right. as the single mom, as kind yeah. of trying to prove herself Right. You know, and, and deal with all these things that are being thrown at her. Yep. So even though you could say, well, there's a huge cast that's involved, but it really is her specific journey. Right. And, and so her goals would be, you know, to talk with to talk with one of the victims of PG&E. Right. right. And then based on that, she learns something which he calls fresh news. I don't know if you mentioned that. Um, ah. And then that uh, motivates her to the next goal. So if she learns something with this first client. Then her next goal is to go to um, City Hall to look at topographical maps of the city to find out where things are, you know, and then she learns something there and that gets her to another goal. So that's sort of the, the step by step process that Professor Edson teaches. And it's there, you know, when you watch Aaron Brockovich, it's all there. And through those goals, she learns to have the self-confidence that she never had when she was a kid. Right, and she based it on her looks, and yep. she still uses that when she goes to the city hall, right. which is such a great scene. <laughs> right, 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 and with Ed Masry too. Uh huh. Yeah. Right, that's true. And then yeah. she goes back to law office, and then they're all giving her these dirty looks, but she's still trying to prove, you know, with Albert Finney's character that, like, let you know, let me keep doing this, let me yeah. keep doing this, and it's a great, it's just a great uh, character study. Yeah, it really film. is. Yeah, it's a beautiful film.